everybody, I'm Cass and this is Jasper and we're with Tales of Wanderlust. We're here in beautiful Colorado and we are about to hook up the RV. So if you want to see what it takes to hook up an Airstream base camp, stay tuned. All right, the first thing we have to do is reposition the truck so that it is in a proper area to hook up the base camp. So safety first, I've got to get Jasper inside so that he doesn't accidentally get run over. All right, bud. All right, going in. In. Good boy. So the reason I back the Forerunner up to the base camp as the initial step is then I can tell with the hitch here how high I need to raise it, but also it's really convenient to start throwing stuff in the back of the truck. So step one, I always bring the Forerunner up. Ah, it's windy! So step two is going to be cleaning up the outside area of the base camp as well as hooking it up. Step three and the final step is getting everything set on the inside. The reason I do it in that order is because of the animals. This way they can stay in the base camp while I get everything set out here, and then I can transfer them into the Forerunner without them having to spend a lot of time in there. But since we're in a really beautiful, very private site right now, and it is the middle of November and not many people are out camping in Colorado, Jasper is going to be able to hang out with us while we clean up the outside area. Napoleon will keep the inside safe and warm for now. All right, in terms of the things we have outside to clean up, this is our mat. It got blown throughout the night, which is why it looks like this. Usually it is spread out. So we'll get that in the back of the Forerunner. We have our outdoor shoe mat as well as Jasper's bed. Jasper and Napoleon do get tied outside on leads. So this is Napoleon's little lead here. Jasper's is a heavier duty metal one from Lowe's and I attach it directly to the frame. So if he ever does pull it, it's pretty secure. All right, the next thing that we do is pack up my ZAMP panels. So these are the deployable solar panels that I use that sit right out here in front of the base camp. You'll see they're very easy. They're plugged into the front ZAMP plug here. So we just simply unplug it, close that up, and then we can pack these things away. How I do this is I take these, down the legs in the back here and then I lay it right into the case. I do that so that they don't scratch on the dirt surface around us and then you can simply take the wire, lay it in here, fold them over top and they've got this little latch here that you just twist shut and now it's all closed. Close it it zips on either side and they're all set so now I'm just gonna throw them right in the back of the forerunner all right things are all packed up let's get the base camp hooked up the first thing we have to do in order to get the base camp hooked up is to lift up the rear stabilizer jacks the reason for that is if you start lifting the front of the base camp without pulling these up, you can actually bend the back door. And I have seen an example where somebody bent it enough that the rear door started leaking. So always pick up these as the first step in hooking up your base camp. All right, so I cheat when I do the rear stabilizer jacks and I use a drill bit. So this drill bit sits right onto the stabilizer jack. Righty tighty is to lower them, lefty loosey is to bring them up. So you just give it a little power. And it's as easy as that. All right, those are done. My supervisor is here making sure that we do everything correctly. All right, in order to hook up, the first thing we're gonna do is remove this master lock. You just twist it, pull it, and it comes right off. This is a lock that goes onto the hitch itself and prevents somebody from just driving up, hooking up, and taking it away. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this hitch lock right here. So you just slide the key right in, twist, 
There are different versions, but this is a twist version. So you just twist it until it comes out and then you pop open the hitch. All right, the next thing we need to do is to bring this up as high as the ball on the Forerunner so that I can back in under it. The base camp has a manual one, so we'll just manually lift it up. You can get this replaced with an automatic one if you want, where you just press a button and it lifts it itself. Now we're gonna back up the Forerunner. You may wonder how I back this up and get it in one try. I have a backup camera. When I am backing up towards the base camp, there is this red line right along the screen. That has to be at a certain place on the hitch in order for it to align. There, done. And then always put on your emergency brake because the Forerunner will roll. So you might get it perfectly aligned and then you get out here and you find out that it's no longer perfectly aligned. So. Looks like we're good to go, and we're gonna drop this thing down. All right, now that the ball is in, we have to hook up the safety chains. So what these do is they prevent, in the event that this comes unhooked, the tongue of the trailer will fall on catching these chains. That's why it's really important to make sure that these are crossed like that. That way, if this comes unhooked, they fall right into those chains. You do want to make sure the chains are a little bit twisted. That way they don't hang right on the ground and drag and cause sparks. So make sure they're up like that, twisted and crossed. The next item is the emergency brake. So I actually traveled for about six months with never hooking this up because I did not know what it was. It's a brake here that again, if the trailer ever becomes disconnected, it will put brakes on the trailer so that it stops. So make sure that is connected over to your hitch as well. There are stories where the actual whole hitch does come off from the truck. So this whole thing goes with the trailer, thereby causing the emergency brake not to pull. So if you did have a place to put an eye bolt in your bumper that you could actually attach this to, then that would guarantee if anything ever happens here, your brake would go off. I don't have one of those at this point, so I still just connect it right there. The other thing you'll notice is I'm not perfectly lined up here. That sometimes can happen when you're connected at an angle like I am right now. So what I'm gonna do is just very slowly inch the truck forward and hope that this clicks into place. So in order to inch forward, what I first have to do is remove the wheel chocks. Man, I have to do some petting. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, go on. Good boy. All right, so we have to remove the wheel chocks. So you're gonna notice here that the front one, it pulls right out. The back one does not. So don't try to pull it out. Don't really push it. What I'm gonna do is actually pull the truck forward and then that will loosen it up and you can pull it out easily. Come here, bud. Good boy. All right, come here. Sit. Good. Stay. There. I don't know if you heard that click, but that is all we needed. Jasper is a good boy. And by doing that, oh, behind the scenes, this was my tripod. By pulling forward just ever so slightly, you'll see that we can now see through and I can get the lock back in there. Now the last thing that we have to hook up is the brake cable. The brake cable here, you see the way I store it, it hangs upside down. That way if it rains, no water gets into the cable. And for the Forerunner, it's really easy. They already have your brakes installed right here. You do have to get an aftermarket brake controller, but the Airstream dealer installed that pretty easily for me. This slides right in. You're gonna see a locking mechanism right here on the door. So it, just like that, pops in, locks that brake into place, that way it doesn't pull out. I'm gonna finish pulling the jack up and then we'll be good to go. By pulling
pulling the trailer forward that little bit, you can see that the wheel chocks are free and easy to pick up. The other thing is we need to get those yellow blocks that was keeping the base camp level. So Jasper's on his place board. We're gonna have him stay right there. And I'm gonna move the trailer forward again, just another couple of inches so we can grab those blocks. Check in the mirror to make sure Jasper's still there. That's all we need. Everything is free. So we're just going to stack these up and then put everything right in the back of the Forerunner. Good boy. Everything on the outside is now hooked up, ready to go. It really is that easy to hook up the base camp. The only thing that's left is to get everything set on the inside. So I'm gonna grab Napoleon, get him and Jasper in the truck, and then I'll take you inside and show you what I have to move around in there. Actually, we're gonna take a quick pee break for Jasper here. So we'll do one more final walk and enjoy the scenery around here while we can. Come on, bud. Load up. All right, little man, you gonna go in the car? Ready? All right, we have catnapped Napoleon and we are gonna put him in the truck. All right, little guy. He's got his own little seat here. I do buckle him in. So there, now he's all safe and secure. What we have to do is we need to get the items out of the rooftop cargo, close up the windows, the ceiling fans, get the pots off the kitchen and move a few heavy items and secure everything on the bed. That way as we're driving down the bumpy roads, especially nothing gets broken in here. All right, so first things first, I kind of just go around the base camp and get things as I find them. So the dog water or the dog food, which Jasper did not eat his breakfast, just goes right there. Napoleon's bed is very convenient because it's a great spot to throw in just loose items. So that's kind of where I throw everything that's loose. It is the last day, so the bed is a mess, but that's what RV living is about. So we're gonna check this window here that is closed. I'm gonna pull everything off of this cargo net up here. This is where I usually keep all of my laptops. Going over here, I do take the cords off. I just drop them down. These items I take and I throw into Napoleon's bed over here. The reason I take that book cover off is there is a nail in the back of it and you can see where I damaged the wall. So that's why there's tape here now to try to protect it. But I also remove it whenever I'm moving so it doesn't scratch it any further. So we're gonna check this window also closed moving over here my ipad i just take that lay it in the bed everything up in this cargo net actually stays it's just sweaters extra blankets paper towel things like that it usually stays up there but if it does fall it's not going to cause any damage okay so that whole back area is now secure that's all i had to do is remove stuff out of the cargo net and take it off the wall in the kitchen now this is actually where most of the work is for getting ready to move so these mugs on the wall i take those off throw them in napoleon's bed this is where i store the fruit that's heavy it's glass so i throw it on the bed same with my blender also very heavy on the bed and then i do need to put the dishes away so we're going to throw those down here in the cupboard all right, once the dishes are put away, I need to secure this drawer. I put these sliders on the drawer that comes standard in the base camp, so you can just slide out the cutlery. But this does come out when you're moving. So I have found the RV after going down a boondocking road where it pushed this door open and the drawer was all the way out like this. So I just take this clamp, slide it right here, tighten it up, and make sure that it is good and secure and that's not going anywhere. And then I just throw the strainer right on top there. Now we're getting close to done. So now I'm just taking the last of the kitchen items and putting them on the floor. Close that. I take these bins and I just put them right on the bed. Those few items like tea, those can stay up there. They're light enough. And then some of Jasper's treats and his e-collar, I take those down and I put them in Napoleon's bed because they do swing 
and I don't want them to cause any damage. For the kitchen sink, I have these metal bowls in here, so I just throw my one dirty knife and then everything else in there. Make sure to lay this down and that this handle is pointing down. If it is up and you close the lid, it will run water. So make sure all that is down and level, then close that on up. I always have a towel in here so that if it does shake, it doesn't smash. That's just my quirkiness. You don't really have to do that. All right, in terms of the cargo nets, those are all set to go. The paper towel, I use Viva paper towel, so it's really hard to unroll and I don't have to do anything and it doesn't unroll while we move. I'm going to make sure that this fan is all the way closed. Take the fridge and make sure that that is off. I'm also going to make sure that the heat is off. So we'll turn the Truma off and then turn the water pump off as well. So everything is now on the bed. It's pushed back to the further end of the bed. So if things do still shake and move, they're not gonna fall off the bed on the front side. And then the last thing we need to do is in the bathroom, I need to close that. And my aftermarket shower head does not stay on when I'm driving down dirt roads. So we're gonna just lay that down close the toilet paper. All right, that is it in the base camp. The final item we have is Jasper's dog bed. So it does come apart and you can throw it in the rooftop carrier. I'm a little bit lazy because we use it at every spot. So I just bring it into the base camp and I drop it on the bed. The base camp, always make sure that deadbolt is locked. Otherwise this could potentially come open. Take the step, put the step in. Tires and everything look fine. I just checked the tire pressure a couple days ago, so I'm not gonna do that again. We're gonna do one final check on everything down here. So we've got our chains, our brake, emergency brake. This is tight. And now finally, I do need to turn off the propane. Always really important to turn off the propane because just in case there's a spark or anything like that, you don't want to catch the front of your RV on fire. All right, and that is it. That is all it takes to hook up the base camp to the Forerunner. You can see here, Napoleon is ready to hit the road. If you have any questions in regards to how to hook up the base camp, feel free to comment below and I will respond to you. So thank you very much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.